Hey, measuring hero, here's Anna. Take a look in your pocket. You probably have one of those here. It has a calculator inside for making calculations. But have you ever thought about how did our ancestors done that before? Well, we travel today all the way from Oberkochen to Bonn to visit the Edith Mill. And we are gonna deep dive into the world of calculating machines. Let's go. Oh, that's amazing. That's a microchip. Oh, what is inside? I need to take a look. I am flying here. Hey, that's really interesting. Hey, Anna, what are you hey, doing Anna. here? Oh, Professor Prince. Uh, <sighs> so I'm enjoying a flight around the microchip. <laughs> This is very nice. This is the scientific work we are doing in the Institute for Discrete Mathematics at the University of Bonn. This is a very modern calculating. So you are doing, when you are using your computer, calculating all the time, even if you don't see. And this is the modern part, but we also have very old calculating machines. So the predecessors of the microchip, if you like, we may show you in the art museum. Sure, let's see how everything started. <laughs> okay, come on. Welcome to the Rithmion in Bonn. I'm here today with Professor Dr. Prince, director of the museum, and Professor Dr. Hocke, head curator of the museum. So, Professor Prince, what can you tell us about the Rithmion? The Arismeum House is the most comprehensive collection of old calculators all over the world. So, you can see what has been used by people a long time before we use computers now, mm -hmm. and it's, we have more than 10,000 pieces of this. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. and we have also about uh, 9,000 uh, slide rules and mathematical instruments mm -hmm. in uh, this museum. And we have also the famous Aritmium Library, uh, because we have also the largest collection of uh, mathematical and recognizing books uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. So That's a huge collection. Yeah. Yes. And because mathematics is a little bit dry for some visitors, we decided to collect constructivist art. And this we show in the art museum. So even if you do not like mathematics, um, you can visit us and you can enjoy just the aesthetic of the house and the art. And then maybe find a little way to um, enjoy also the old calculating devices. Mm -hmm. And how did the art museum start? This is a very good question. So I guess Professor Korte, the founder of the Art Museum, can answer it the best. Professor Dr. Korte, thank you for having us. So you are the founder of the Art Museum. Correct. How did it all start? Yeah, it started more or less by an accident. See, when I was a student, I had to work to do the, my work in mathematics and applied mathematics with those crank machines. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and I had to go to a special room at the institute to do the homework, and I was a bit lazy. So I thought, I better do it myself. So I bought me my own crank machine, a Brunswiger machine, which at that time was already 50 years old, and it didn't work properly. So I had to go quite often with a screwdriver or with some oil to make it running. Mm -hmm. Of course, I did my work perfectly. I got very good grades for it. However, I realized at that time, you know, that this technology will die out because electronic was already on the way up. Uh, the big number crunchers were already electronic and it was evident that the small will become electronics too. So I thought it would be good to keep this uh, forever, to keep this, so I started to collect. Since, you know, a lot of very, very famous mathematicians like Leibniz, Polini, Schickard, Pascal, they all worked on it and uh, it was a wonderful and ingenious mechanic in it. And so I started to collect uh, calculators. Okay, so Professor, thank you very much. Thank you for having us again. So let's go back to the museum. So Professor Prince, this table is also a calculating instrument. Yes, it has been used by calculating masks at the beginning of the Renaissance period. And the idea was at that time people couldn't calculate. They had to come to calculating masses in big cities. They had tables like this. But if you didn't trust the calculating masters, there were two masters calculating at the same time. And if they really uh, was, it was proved that they did wrong, the calculating table was 
destroyed. And it was an Italian banker, and it was Banca Rotta. So the bankrupt today comes from this table still. Okay, that's a pretty interesting story. And so how do we come from this analog device to a calculating machine with the gears and buttons? Yes. And <laughs> this was really an interesting step. So we may show you the very first of these calculating machines, which we have here in the Arithmeo. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you understand uh, what great inventory ideas are behind these objects. Okay, great. Let's go then. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's so. go. Here you see our famous Pascaline. It's the first calculating machine which survived. So it's from 1642. And why is this machine called Pascaline? Because this machine has been designed by a famous mathematician, Blaise Pascal. Mm -hmm. And uh, this machine has been built by a famous also clockmaker from uh, Rouen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you show me how it how this machine works? Yes, yeah. we have a model here. So here we see the model, and now I show you we can put nine at each place, for example, so that we have the number 999,999. And this I do now by uh, turning these dials. So we have now this number, and if you add one at the first place, you will see something fascinating. Okay. You may try. Oh, everything turned at once. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is a carry of tens, and it was the first time a machine could do it that nice. Mm -hmm. And um, this machine has been built for adding and subtracting, but now I can show you a machine which has been built for all four species, meaning also multiplication and division. And we can go uh, there. It has been built by Pfarrer Philipp Matthäus Hahn, and it looks like a nice golden cake. Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I can show you a multiplication with the Han machine. Yeah, sure. This is very nice because we have a memory for the input number. I can make a calculation, for example, 135. And we multiply this by 15. So now you see here is 135. We turn the crank once, but I have to turn four other times. So now we have five here and the result for five times, but I don't want to turn 15 times, it's very long. So mm -hmm. I make a shift and I can turn on the place of the tens only once more. And the result is 20, 25. Uh -huh. So um, this is a great way to make the multiplication, but I've seen you need to turn the crank a couple of times, especially yes. if you are working with big numbers. Yes, this uh, is true. Is there a faster way to do that? Yes, yes. Uh, about 80 years later, uh, Morel uh, designed an automatic uh, multiplication, mm -hmm. and uh, which was much, much faster than this. Okay, and do you have the system yes. here? Yes, yes, yes the original two. machine. So the original machine. Uh, let's go, we can show yes. it to you. Yeah, sure, that would yes, be great. Yes, I will show you. <laughs> ah, so this is the famous Edith Morel. Yes, this is true. So you saw that the hand machine, I had to turn the crank very often to multiply, but this was an automatic multiplying machine, so I could turn the butterfly key only a little bit to move the arrow to the next digit, and I made a multiplication of the input number uh, as often as I turned uh, the arrow to the next uh, number. So this was a fascinating machine. It was the fastest multiplying machine of the 19th century, and it is really famous. And I see there are some windows on the side, so you can really see what's going yes, on. Yes, we mm -hmm. inspected uh, very much in detail uh, this machine. Mm -hmm. However, we have a very similar or comparable machine of the same period, and we would like to know more, to go m much deeper inside. Okay, so that sounds like a very interesting challenge. I'm really eager to learn way more about this machine and the second one, but mm -hmm. we need to stop here, otherwise this video will be way too big. Uh, a new measuring hero. You are probably also very interested in learning more about the Arit Morel. So make sure you are subscribed in our channel that you activate the notifications and come to join us on the second episode of the Arit Meal. Bye bye. <laughs>